gibberellins are another class of hormones. But aside from auxin and cytokinin, which promote growth and differentiation, gibberellins are used in the early stages of plant growth. So gibberellins essentially are promoting germination. And once a plant has has begun germinating, that is when the other hormones like auxin and cytokinin will come in and take part in the cell growth and differentiation. So what we see is that we have this young seed and it ha it's in the proper environment to start growing. So gibberellin, the hormone gibberellin, will be released inside the seed. The release of gibberellin stimulates digestive enzymes that will break down the endosperm. So the endosperm is broken down and we start to see this radical forming. And this radical will grow into the, the, the primary, uh, the cotyledons, we will see the roots. So essentially what the gibberellin is doing is that it's promoting that early growth, it's promoting the germination. So another thing that gibberellins are responsible for are the stem elongation. And we can see that right over here. So this initial radical, uh, it, it's, it's beginning to elongate. And as it elongates, it's going to reach above ground. And then we're going to see more of ox, oxen and cytokinin come in for further growth. So gibberellins are also required for fruit production, but auxin is also required for fruit production because we know that auxin is a primary, it's a very important hormone for plants for growth. So auxin and gibberellin, both similarly growth hormones, are required for fruit production because essentially fruit production will require um, will require more cells to be produced, so we need auxin and gibberellin. So gibberellins also work with auxin to promote cell division and plant elongation, as we've mentioned already. So gibberellin, it's promoting that early germination. It's promoting further, um, it's promoting further cell growth, uh, plant growth, and it does that alongside auxin. And we know that auxin also requires cytokinin because cytokinin is the hormone that is promoting cytokinesis, which is the splitting of the 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 nuclei, the the two cells into two daughter cells. So auxin gibberellin, cytokinin, these are all hormones involved in, uh, in plant growth. But gibberellins are specifically needed for the initial germination and stem elongation. So the radical is the, uh, is the, is the, this over here. So the radical is what is going to develop into our primary root. So over here, this is what's going to develop into our roots. Um, another thing about gibberellins is that since they're promoting elongation, they're promoting growth, that means that if we were to place uh, a dwarf a dwarf plant, so a very short plant, and we sprayed it with gibberellins, what we would see is that the dwarf plant will, will start to elongate because it's receiving the gibberellin. So gibberellin is very important for elongation and germination. This is an example of the dwarf plant. So if we take a look at this dwarf plant over here, it's very close to the ground. Um, the, the internode region is very short. So an internode is the region between two nodes. And at the node, this is where we see the branching occurring. So at this node and this node, the area in between is the internode. So on the dwarf plant, the internodes are very short. Okay, but once the gibberellin is added, we see that stem elongation and we see the internode distance increasing. We also see this in grapes. So the grapes that we receive at our supermarket, they're often sprayed with gibberellins because the gibberellins not only increase the size of our grapes, but they also increase that internode space, uh, internode space compared to the grapes that do not have the gibberellins sprayed onto them. This is just an example of uh, a plant and how it begins to uh, elongate from that initial seed, develops that radical, we see, uh, we see those roots come in, and 
this initial process is all due to the gibberellin. So we can think about this. So each spring we see new we see new plants beginning to blossom. What is happening? So in the spring, essentially, we have a lot of seeds. So we have a lot of seeds dispersing, um, and gibberellins, the oh, the hormone gibberellin, is activating that initial germination, that initial growth period. And during the during the latter months of spring, we see more growth. And I, if we see more growth, we we know that we have gibberellin, auxin, and cytokinin. So we would have all three because auxin is required for plant growth and differentiation. Cytokinin is required for cell division, cytoplasm division specifically. And we need that gibberellin to continuously promote the elongation and germination. So we would see all three of these hormones all throughout uh, the growth period, the summer, the fruit production period especially, we need all three. But in the fall, once the plant begins to lose its leaves and we lose our flowers, as it gets colder, the plants uh, we can we can think about it and say, okay, the plant does not have gibberellin, it does not have auxin or cytokinin because we no longer see that growth, we no longer see that germination, and that goes for all of fall and all of winter, and then once we go back into spring, we see the gibberellin um, being produced in the seeds and the seeds breaking down their endosperm, uh, and we see this process all over again. And this is just a diagram of um, a eudicot. It's a eudicot because we see those two cotyledons. And uh, it's demonstrating what would happen once gibberellin was produced in a seed. And that is essentially the plant hormone gibberellin.